Welcome to the Golf Smarter Podcast, Rory. Thank you, Fred. Thank you for having me. It's great to have you on. I was so excited to catch you because uh, when I saw your article online, mm -hmm. The Internet is Killing Golf, mm -hmm. um, it, I know that you write for Golf Chicago Magazine. And that yep. was that where the, you initially wrote this for? Yes, originally, yes. Yep. Because it was flying all over the place. And you got to love the interwebs because uh, this thing, when I found it, it was on medium.com? Yes. Yep. Okay. So but, do they get your permission for that or what's the deal? Well, Medium is a, it's kind of an online platform that I post my stuff because um, Golf Chicago's <clears throat> online platform is all PDF. So I want, yeah. I want another place to get it out there. But at Medium, you can track views and, and reads and whatnot. And that one just somehow, like you said, struck a nerve with a bunch of people. I think there were eighteen to 20,000 hits on it or something like that. Congratulations. So, That's I awesome. I, I knew there was something there. I mean, there's enough. We talk enough about what the internet is doing to us at large. Um, and it, it was just something that was kind of in my brain with the game of golf. So, yeah, it struck a nerve with some people. So, clearly, glad you found clearly. It. good to meet you. Great to meet you, too, buddy. Great to meet you. And congratulations on Samuel. I know you got a little baby at home. And that's yes, yes. Th that's why I'm holed up down here in the in the basement so he doesn't interrupt us with his. Gee, and I thought you were in the penthouse of a I, I can't tell you're in a basement. You didn't need to say that. Yeah, yeah. It's 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 a nice basement though, I must say. It's pretty plush. So what prompted this article? What got you thinking this way to make you say, you know what? I know it's killing it. Because you know, everyone's talked about as you yeah. say. It, golf is too hard. Golf is too expensive. It takes too long, you know, and ever since the tiger effect has uh, gone downhill, which I still think is the tiger effect, actually, sure. you know, it peaked at a certain point and all, and they were building golf courses like crazy. And then they stopped building golf courses and everything changed. Mm -hmm. um, and so what made you think that it was the internet's fault? To be honest, I mean, one, I have a 900 word limit, right? So, so I, when I make an argument, it, I can't be as nuanced as I would like to be, right? So in, in some ways it intentionally is, is not as, um, as complex as maybe I would like it to be, say if I were to give a speech or, or write a, you know, a 3000 word article. However, I have a unique vantage point in the sense that I, I'm a teacher, okay? so. I always say, if we want to know where we're headed, let's look at the kids. So, for example, my juniors that I teach English here just outside of Detroit. junior High school juniors? High school juniors in English. So, for example, they're no longer on Facebook. Right. So, let's take that as an example. So, instead of looking at what we do and, you know, look at people from, say, 25 to, to 60, let's look at what the kids are doing. What do I see in kids? Um more so than anything, it is this screen addiction and addiction to the internet. So I also coach golf. So I see what happens when a kid is trying to learn the game. And I've, I've seen the way that, that the internet has sort of encroached um, that experience. And I'll give you an example. So a kid is, is working on his swing, right? And um, I'm at the range with him and he keeps hitting it left. And he automatically, what he wants is an answer. Coach, I'm hitting it left. Tell me exactly what I need to do so I can hit it straight. And he assumes I can give him an answer. Why is that? Because he's so used to, I need an answer to something. I'm going on Google. Boom, it's done, right? So I was starting to see that with the, with the kids I was coaching. And then the kids I was teaching, I was noticing 10 years ago, a kid could read for 40 minutes straight. And then it became 30 minutes straight. And then it became 20. And now I'm at a point, even with my most advanced kids, at about 15 minutes, they're done. So wow. they're challenging, you know, text in front of them. So you, you extrapolate that out to a golf course, right, where it takes that focus. Um, and I just think, I think it's starting to hit that younger generation. And while I don't discount the other factors like expense and, and time um, and, and challenge, I think the internet is, is, is a big one. I don't think we can ignore it because it's, it's moving into every other area of our life.
right? So that's kind of those ideas were kicking around in my head, and um, I just I just said, you know, I got, somebody's got to say this, and I hadn't seen it yet, and so I just said it, and here we are. <laughs> <laughs> and here we are. Well, you know, I, a couple of things that you said about that. First of all, the 15 minutes down to the 15 minutes of reading, there are answers to that called Ritalin. Right. Um, right? I mean, yeah. it, I, I was never able to read more than 15. I don't even know if I'm still able to read more than 15 minutes at a time. True. True. Um, and, uh, you know, on the Golf Smarter podcast, I've had the opportunity to talk to literally hundreds of golf instructors. Mm -hmm. And most of them say that their lessons, uh, there are few students that they have that come back again and again and again. Mm -hmm. Most people go, hey, I'm going on vacation. I haven't played in eight months. Help me hit it straight. And they come in for a lesson. Sure. So we are not much different than the kids of, I want that answer now on how to do it. Mm -hmm. Now, what none of us want to accept, whether we're 15 or 50, mm -hmm. is that it takes a lot of work. Right. It's, a, you know, it's the, as you probably played a lot of sports as a kid, as did I, this is the hardest sport we've ever played. Yeah, without question. And, and, and Fred, maybe there's a connection there in the sense that because it's so hard, it's easier to give up. And, and now we have something else there to replace it more so than we did in the past, mm -hmm. right? So if you were out there playing nine holes 20 years ago and you got bored, right? It's like, well, I'm out here. I might as well finish up the nine holes, right? What, what can somebody do now? They can take out their phone. They can play video games. And I see this out on the course, right? Oh, where, yeah. where, where dad's got son out there and son's just kind of mailed it in. And now he's on he's on his phone. So it's one thing to not, you know, play out the nine and maybe say, OK, dad, I'm going to watch you. But what I see is people are just kind of mailing it in because we have that immediate distraction. Right. We, right. It's harder to be still. You and I are sitting at a bar. You go take a piss. What am I going to do? I'm taking my phone out. Right. I'm not I'm sure. not going to sit there and daydream. And that and daydreaming and being still and being deliberate is so endemic to what golf is. I, I just feel that that part of what what digital technology, specifically mobile technology, not not the internet in general, is eroding that. And and maybe it's a slow process, um, but I don't know. It, it makes me sad. It sure. makes me sad. But there, it skips generations too, right? I mean, it could mean that, especially now with this youth movement on the tour yeah. of, you know, Rory and Jordan, mm -hmm. uh, Ricky and Jason, yeah. right? You get all these 20 somethings that are in there. There's a whole new generation of, of excited young kids, it seems like, who are starting to pay attention to golf again. True. A and I would. I mean, it's definitely that's how Tiger. That's how Tiger did it, yeah. right? But what did Tiger do? I mean, in terms of, and, and I referenced this in the article. You know, the big thing with Tiger was uh, inspiring a generation of minority golfers. That was the big thing with the first tee. Right. Uh, where Where are we with that? As I said in the article, you know, I, I I'm a teacher and a coach in Metro Detroit, and at our regional tournament there was one African-American player. So from your team or on the course, on the course, we're talking a hundred and some kids. Wow. And, and tell me, uh, what, what is the percentage of the school that you teach? What is this percentage? Uh, of? School I teach probably 70% African-American. Really? Yep. And, and my team, let's see, I think we had, um, hmm, I think even at, at my team, we had, Roughly, I think we had seven or eight white kids, three or four, three or four black kids. And, and not that my school is necessarily representative, um, but, you know, let's look at Jordan Spieth, Rory McIlroy, Jason Day and Ricky Fowler's background for a second. OK, right. So I don't know a ton about all of them, but I think they come from pretty well off backgrounds. So. Let's take my kids on my team. And actually, I, I might have had a, I think I had a former, a parent on here. Yeah, Lori, she's a parent of one of my students, one of my players, Logan, who's graduated. 
a lot of my players, they don't have their own cars. They're working at McDonald's. They can't get dropped off at the country club at, you know, 8 a.m. and picked up at 3. So so the players that get better, they get better in the offseason because they have the time to do that. Mm-hmm. Now, now we're getting a little bit down into a rabbit hole here because that doesn't necessarily have to do sure. with the Internet. But when I see what Spieth and these guys are doing, I love it. But what kind of access did they have? Right. Right. And, right. and we look at we look at Tiger, but this guy was was a machine. Right. I mean, <laughs> he's a machine. In fact, that might have been what caused his downfall. So we can't really compare uh, compare Tiger and say that, well, th- there could be another one. So I don't know. I don't know if looking at those guys, you know, I think when you look at those guys in golf versus say, um, another sport. I think there's a much larger gap from where a kid is to achieve that than there is in any other sport um, because of because of cost and access mainly. And then I think the the, you know, the Internet is one thing that really sort of exacerbates that problem, if that makes sense. How many of the kids on your team uh have their own equipment and how many do you have to supply equipment for? I end up supplying equipment for about half of them. Really? And, um, and over the years it's gotten a little bit better, but you know, this, this brings up another issue, um, which we call the digital divide in education. So we had a coaches meeting and we had to decide, can kids use rangefinders? Now Hmm. all of the, we're at this coaches meeting and all of the wealthier districts are saying, of course, why not? We can speed up play. And I'm sitting there going, well, wait a second. Are you, are you now at a competitive advantage? Because all of your kids have range finders and they know they're 137 yards out. My kid has no idea because his parents aren't going to, aren't going to fork over 250 bucks. Mm-hmm. So then, and they're arguing, well, it's going to speed up pace of play. That, that This was their argument. So I was the only I think I was one of two coaches who voted against it. And so that's just out of how many coaches out of at that one, there were probably 10, 10 of us at that one. Wow. Okay. And then it ended up being adopted statewide. Um, so there's another example, right? Or like, even when kids get equipment, they're, they're going up to Dick's sporting goods. They're not getting fitted. Um, and then when they get the, their, their lessons, they're not getting lessons from, you know, the, the kick-ass pro at the country club, they're getting it from Joe assistant pro who's up at, you know, um, up at the local range. It's, it's the Matthew effect, right? The rich get rich, richer, the poor get poor. So, um, you know, that's a, that's a whole other article, I suppose, but I kind of see it on the ground and, um, I don't know. It, it makes me, it makes me wonder if the mission of, organizations like say the first T to what extent are they achieving that? I, I don't know. And I don't want to be hypercritical of them. Um, but the, the whole idea was to make golf more accessible to more people. And I'm not sure that's happening. Any ideas, any suggestions? Um, is it, and, and does golf want that? Now I, I, this is a dangerous topic to, to head towards, right. but I think that I get the sense that the USGA doesn't have a problem being elitist. Sure. No, I would, I would agree with that. <laughs> well, not only that, but they <laughs> make being elitist and also making poor decisions for broadcasting. I guess that's a whole other. That's whole another topic other altogether. Fox, but Fox debate. We're talking about accessibility. <laughs> yeah. You know, and, and Fred, maybe, and you probably know better than I do, but so we've got this aging population and we've got, you know, uh, declining memberships because let's face it, a lot of golfers are dying. <laughs> they either can't walk or they're dying. And then we've got kids that would be introduced to it by their fathers fathers and mothers um, because their grandparents are, are, are kind of moving on. And so suggestions, you know, how do we get, how do we get the twenties, thirties and forty somethings playing? Well, now we're going to get into a, a sociological argument in the sense that we're working more than we ever have. There's, there's, 
I saw a, a statistic in Michigan, 6% of households have a working spouse and a spouse at home. 6%. The rest are both working or single parent. Yeah. And so wow. the time, so so we get back to the time. So how does a you know, how does a how do I now it's unique for me as a teacher. I do have the summers off, but at 37, so let's fast forward when when Sam is is, you know, eight and I'm 45, if my wife is still working as well, you know, how do we get that time? And this comes back to time to go do that. Um, discretionary time, discretionary income, you know, I, those are going down. It, mm -hmm. the, the numbers show that. And maybe we don't want it, Fred. That's the other thing. I like when the course is wide open. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to wait at every tee box. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Um, you also have added something to your own personal mix that uh, I, I, when I talk to a lot of the Golf Smarter community, the listeners in the community, mm -hmm. um, the one of the huge things that gets in the way of getting out to play golf is you have a baby at home. Yeah. That kind of, you know, and now until you're done with Little League and they're, that right. you don't need to be a coach anymore, it's going to be a long time before you can get a day off on the weekend to go out and play. Well, let me, and I, I did an article on this. I wrote a letter to my wife before Samuel was born. Mm -hmm. I got a couple things going for me, Fred. Number one, my father-in-law is a, a two or three handicap. Oh, so she grew up around golf. Yeah, she grew up around it. And no matter how much I play, it probably won't be as much as he did. <laughs> so in that sense, I, I am lucky there. Um, but That's I think right. what, you know, what I learned after having Samuel was that before my thought was, I'm really going to want to play golf. How do I, how do I finagle it so I can do that? And then after I had him, after we had him, I was more like, I'd rather be hanging out with him. Right. right. So right. as long as, yeah. as long as that's the case, I'm, I'm fine with my handicap skyrocketing. Um, but then as soon as, as soon as, I don't know, what do you, what happened to your, your golf playing uh, frequency once you had kids or did you pick it up? You picked it up a little bit later. I, well, actually the way I got started was my younger one uh, at the age of 12 went to a summer camp that was golf and I, I was not playing at that point. Mm -hmm. And so he went to a summer camp and they played golf every day. It was at a golf, you know, the local nine hole course. And he came home and said to me, Hey, can I show you what I learned today? And I'm like, wow. of course. Mm -hmm. And he goes, all right, can we, can we go to the, you know, the golf course was just actually just down the street from us. So he says, can we go down there? Cause I learned about etiquette. And I'm like, for you, that's absolutely what I want you to teach me. If somebody else is getting through to you that for years, what we've been trying to explain to you how to, you know, communicate with people and, and respect other people. If you want to show me what you've learned, great. So we went to the golf course. He showed me some stuff. I fell in love with the game. Mm -hmm. uh, for, I was hooked at that point and he got bored by the end of the summer. He was like, yeah, okay. It's like, it's too, he couldn't play little league. It was too slow. He, basketball. It was good. He ended up wrestling for four years in high school. Okay. Um, but then in his, you know, after all, well, he, he's just turned 30 and for like the last three years, he's gotten back into playing golf and gotcha. loves it now. But he also sees value in his work of being able to play golf. Right. You know, he's, he's in commercial real estate. So there's everybody, you know, they, they've got these meetings elsewhere in different country and they're going to go play golf today. And then, they, you know. Gotcha. Yeah. So um, it never really affected me in raising kids. But I, I know there would have been no way I would have had time because, right. you know, I, well, I'll put it this way. When my kids were growing up, I never watched football on Sunday because we always did stuff as a family. We were always getting stuff done. My wife and I were both working. I was self well, I'm a Lions fan, so that's pretty much taken care of itself <laughs> for me. I mean, let's be honest. <laughs> I'm wondering if I can pull off like a 7 a.m., you know, 7 a.m. Saturday morning. And it's just, and again, I'm in Michigan, so it's not like I can play year round anyways. Right. You just get it on the calendar be the first one off and see if I can swing that. Um, 
And your wife goes, <laughs> yeah, 7 a.m. That's perfect. You can play nine holes today. Yeah. <laughs> right. Be, be exactly. back before 9.30. Yeah. Yes. I'll give you till 9.30. Yeah. We'll, 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 we'll see how that goes. Um, she. The thing is, though, she understands that my golf is is my physical, spiritual, and mental therapy. So I'm very blessed in that sense where a lot of guys, you know, that their, their wives might say, well, you're, you're just going to hang out with the guys. Like she understands if, if I'm stressed out playing golf helps me. And so for her, it's yoga. You know, the difference mm -hmm. is yoga takes an hour. <laughs> golf takes four, four and a half, five, if, you know, there and back. But she understands that. And so that's that's kind of like that bill. It's paying for therapy, gym membership, and um, you know, in in lieu of going to a, a, a Buddhist retreat out in you know out in the Rocky Mountains or something. So she gets that. So I'm lucky. Most of my friends and family, they don't even believe. They can't even believe how um, understanding she is about that kind of thing. So. Well, I I, I got all the, is she in the room? She's she's upstairs. Okay, she can't hear me right now. No. no. Okay, let me give you a little piece of advice, buddy, yeah, no. from someone who's been married a long time. Okay, it's going to not only benefit you and the marriage; uh -huh. it's going to benefit your golf game. Yeah. Start doing yoga with her. Ooh, good call. So then you get an hour with her. You're doing something together. You have something you share, sure. and it's going to help your golf game. Did you do that? Oh, yeah. Uh -huh. Oh, yeah. No, I still do yoga with my wife. Yeah. Oh, yeah. No, no, no. I, I mean, I'm, I think the most, really, I'm the most inflexible person I know. Then you need to start doing yoga. How do you get over the insecurity when you go into the room? Everybody's fit. Fred, you know, one of my New Year's resolutions is to be able to touch my toes. And I'm, I'm a good 18, 18 inches away right now. So I'm no good. I'm, I'm, I'm actually nervous about this. Are you good at golf? I'm a I'm a six handicap. You're pretty good. Yeah, I mean I've been down. Did, to did you start out as a six handicap? Good point. No, no, you worked at it. Do I stand? Do I stay? stay and you there? know what else? It takes a like golf. Yoga takes a while. You're going to have to stick with it. Mm -hmm. But you know, we all have this thing. It's like I'm going to go into this class, and everyone's going to be looking at me, and it's like. Nobody cares about you, dude. Good point. <laughs> you know, and it's like, there's always going to be a beginner and they're going to pat you on the back for giving it a shot. Right. Right. And you know what else? If you don't want to do the class, tell your wife, hey, look, I found this great app that we can do yoga together at home off of this, off the iPad. Yeah. So when the baby, when Sam takes a nap, yeah. let's go do yoga for an hour, you know, as long as we can until he, you know, wakes up again. But we, most of the time, my wife and I are doing it at home. We got yoga mats. We just, you know, do them there. That's a good call. He goes to, she goes to classes. I don't go with her. When I go to the gym, I go for a swim, mm -hmm. you know, and then she goes, she'll go do her yoga class, but um, we'll do yoga at home together. Yeah. And it's, it's quality time. And you're right. I mean, the, the, the literature is clear on how much it helps your golf game too. Cause again, I'm a decent player and I'm inflexible. So you might have me sold on that one, Fred. <laughs> she could write me the thank you note. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, you know, I want to suggest if anybody who's, uh, we are live on blab right now. Um, and thank you for those who are joining in on the conversation. Um, if you'd like to submit a question, if you have something you'd like to ask Rory, you can just type in slash Q and then your question. I can put it up on the screen. And if you want to wait a little bit, stick around. Um, I'll open it up. So if you want to join in the conversation uh, with me and Rory, that would be fine too. I'll open up the uh, so, uh, the button there so that you can call in and, and join us for the conversation. Um, I don't know, uh, Rory, if you saw the, uh, uh, I guess it was the December issue, nope, February 2016 of Golf Magazine. Mm -hmm. um, we talked about this a little bit last week. Yeah. Uh, yep. There you go. Yeah. So this article, is this, it comes up backward on my computer, uh, on my screen. No, right? it, it comes up perfectly here. Yep. So this article right here, 59 reasons while now is the best time to be a golfer. Okay. So and, I and haven't read the article, but maybe you can give me some key points. I will definitely do that because it disputes what you're saying. Okay, let's hear it. 
Um, so some of the things like green fees are falling, right? It's a huge surprise. In 2005, average green fee, $34. 2015, $26. Okay. All right. Um, uh, yeah, okay. That's that's the number one reason they give. Uh, let's see. Then they have people. You can win, you know, the fantasy sports. They're saying with fantasy sports, now you can win a lot of money watching golf. Uh, the DVR has helped golf because now you can record the tournament and go out and play. That's that's a good call. I like that one. I like that one. But do, uh, you know, better tools, better equipment, uh, great destination courses. Um, uh, the one I wanted to get to you was, let's see, golf fashion has never been cooler, fitted irons, the apps that are available. Aha. But don't bet against them. You can, no, 25, you can bring your kids to the golf course is number 25. Um, number 33, uh, let's see, uh, Boise, Idaho's Warm Springs Golf Course offers family nights, just $10 per head for the, the whole family to play after four o'clock. So they're trying to make it more inclusive for the whole family and make it a family activity, which is probably not a bad idea. Did your wife grow up playing as well or she just saw dad play? Um, she has the golf swing of a... Um, Easy. Be careful. No, no, no. no. <laughs> the golf swing of a, of a single digit handicap. She has the patience of a... I don't know. Average golfer. Crocodile. I don't know. She... <laughs> So she played, she played basketball and, and soccer. So her thing was being aggressive and taking control. Let's face it. What is golf? It's, it's stepping back and letting it come to you. And yeah. so there's no control at all. Yeah. So she's just not there. Um, I think her, her dad even told me he, he was too um, critical when he was teaching her the game and it mm. kind of turned her off. So she might, she might come around. She might yeah. come around. You got to. Yeah. You know. My wife keeps threatening. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> she plays nine holes twice a year. Okay. <laughs> that's, now, that's what's your stance on that one? See, and, you, know, you got to be honest because some guys will say you definitely don't want your wife playing golf because that's an area of your life that you get to protect as being yours. Mm -hmm. And other guys will say, no, get her in as soon as possible. It's something you all can do together. And maybe it depends on the relationship you have with your wife. <laughs> My wife and I worked, we met working together and then we were in business together for 15 years. So um, we, we we're pretty much Velcroed to one another and, and okay. that's fine. Okay. Um, but <laughs> she knows that, uh, you know, as you said, it's, it's my spiritual release. Uh, yeah, I need to get to the golf course. There's definitely a need because if I'm not, out taking that four hour walk and I walk golf courses. Yep, um, yeah. And uh, I just, I'm a friendlier person after I've gotten a chance to play. Now I'm, I'm in a situation where I can play golf 12 months a year mm -hmm. uh, most of the time. But luckily right now we're getting rain here in Northern California for the first time in four years. So I haven't, I have played once in the last two months. Oh, so wow. I'm going a little stir crazy. Oh. I mean, between schedule and everything else, but uh, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm definitely needing to get out. It's, it's gotcha. been a while. It's been hard to do. Huh. Um, but so, so I, the reason I want her to play is yeah. because we um, will take a week vacation okay. and I will, I will play golf once. Mm -hmm. um, and, but, and usually what I'll do is I'll turn it into a podcast thing where I'll, I'll, you know, interview somebody while I'm there and I'll get some tape and I'll get some video and, you know, we'll, we'll do the podcast. And then I can say, well, it was a work trip, mm -hmm. you know? Right. Um, but it would be great if she would spend the day with me yeah. as opposed to just leaving her at the place going, I'll be back at the end of the day. And she's like, well, I, you know, no, you're not playing twice because I'm not going to sit around waiting for you. Right. Right. Gotcha. Yeah. So That's there's that. Um, your, your high school team, yes. uh, boy, uh, boys and girls. Well, it's, it's, it's boys, but because we don't offer a girls team, Ooh. we have to take girls who they usually sign up early and then they, they come, come to the first meeting and see they're in a room with a bunch of immature adolescent boys and they go, ah, no thanks. So I did yeah. have one girl play a couple years ago. Um, but that's it. So yeah. So boys team. Um, well, number 32 on this, make room for the ladies. It says that the USGA LPGA girls golf program skyrocketed 4,000 players 
in 2010 to about 50,000 players in 2015. Hmm. So they're saying that they're in, and youth marches on. PGA Junior Golf League celebrated nearly 100% growth in 2015 with 13,000 new players, a total of 30,000 boys, uh, I'm sorry, 30,000 boys and girls played on 2,500 PGA Junior League teams nationwide. Hmm. Again, that kind of disputes what you're saying, I hate to yeah. say. But, but you, you, now your piece was like a gut piece. It wasn't like you did a ton of research on this, was it? Well, it just, it, your you're teaching. It was a gut piece, but here's what I'll say about Golf Magazine or Golf Digest or, or most golf magazines or outlets. Is, <laughs> you know, and I, I guess I have to be careful here somewhat, but no, I don't have to be careful. This is on Blab. This is on Blab. And I can say whatever I want. I mean, let's face Absolutely. It. So perception is reality. And stories like that make people go out and buy more equipment. Yep. Some of this equipment is on a, what, a six month rotation and they come out and say, I, I don't know if, which company, I think I know which company puts out a new model every six months. Right. So a big one, yeah. what we're, <laughs> what we're doing is, so these media outlets are obviously funded by advertising. Okay. And so golf equipment is the biggest racket out there. It's the biggest racket out there, Fred. You oh, know. I've I've ripped into this for so many episodes. I it drives me crazy. Team. Hang on. Let me see if I, if I have this book. I'm not leaving. Where is it? Uh, <laughs> you just did. This book right here. This book. Um, if, it, no, no, you're good. Straight up Future of Golf in America. And his, his basic thesis is that. Um, Jeff Shackelford. Why do I know that name? He's he's done some other stuff too. Yeah. Um, uh, no, Shackelford was a different. Uh, was an athlete, not Jeff. It was a architect of Canyon Golf Course in Moore Park, oh. California. Um, okay. He he argues that they need to restrict these equipment rules on tour and say, listen, that you can't you can't let these guys go out there and hit the ball three seventy, right? and then hit a sand wedge in and go out and shoot 27 under. This, this isn't what the game was meant to do, right? But mm -hmm. you do that, and then you sell that club to Joe Public and go, hey, you you can go hit it 370, and now next year, here, you can hit it 370 and dead straight. And so, obviously, it benefits Golf Magazine if more people are going out buying equipment, more people are going out and playing golf, right? And more people think think that more and more people are going out there and playing the game, right? All the, the technologies, the, the tracking, the, the thing that you hook up to your hand while you're swinging, Fred, you've seen this thing that does the analytics and how far out on the course, right? right. Yeah. I All love that of those things are, they're great for generating revenue in the golf industry. I believe, so you take these 30,000 kids are they being brought up on the game in the way it was meant to be played? Right. So if is I, that relevant? Wait a minute. Wait, I, I, I would love to get into the argument of are, are they know, gonna sustain you know, the intent of the game and, and, you know, let's, let's, you know, they'll stay to the tradition and honor the tradition. It's like, crap, they, let's, let's play today. You know, um, who are we talking about? So what do you think of 15 inch holes? Um, and, the, and these efforts that golf courses are making to try to bring more people in to make it easier and more fun. I'm really conflicted on this one, Fred, and I'll draw an analogy to, to school, right? It's, you know, what do you think about kids don't read full novels anymore? They just read short stories only and passages. So where do we draw the line, right? So it's, it's hard. It's too hard. So let's make it easier. More people can do it instead of, you know what, it's, it's really hard. Let's accept it that, 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 that it's hard and develop some resilience in people, right? And you know what? And so th this, is, this is where I get back to, well, if you don't want to be out there, that's fine. This is where I get back to. If you don't want to deal with the challenge of having to, to make a putt in a regulation size hole, maybe you don't belong in the game of golf. Maybe you belong somewhere else, right? 
Now, I think at an early age, that's fine. Foot golf, the the um, the you know the bigger holes. I think that's fine. You let kids kind of get some success, but then at a certain point, obviously, you you you've got to go away from that. I don't know where that happens. I'm not a teaching professional. I've got a six month old, right? So I, I don't know. Um, but you know, the the balance of the purity of the game and the actual and the growth of the game, it's it's really you know we're all struggling with it. And I don't know if it's this as much as this. Yeah, I mean, what's yeah. your stance on that? On on these gimmicky things to 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 get more people out there. Um, I. I... I will uh, side with Arnold Palmer on this thinking, hey, if it's going to bring more people interested in it and they're having fun. And yeah. you know, I live right next to a country club that I'm not a member of. Nice. And they, they, yeah, they, <laughs> they, uh, they, they try to clear. <laughs> yeah. They, um, are they listening? You guys know I'm not a member I, and I don't walk onto your golf course. I promise. So they, um, uh, they tried the the 15 inch holes just for a day. I mean, they just did it on you know family day type thing. People were playing in three and a half hours. Mm -hmm. They loved that. Yeah. They got to play with their kids. They loved that, mm -hmm. you know. And if a kid, you know, if you're going out with your family and you're you know you know you're trying to pick up the pace a little bit, you know, you're a golfer. No one else in your family is, but you're trying to get them hooked into it, mm -hmm. and you have this gimmick. That, you know, it, for you, it's a gimmick and you're not going to post your score anyway. But if you get your kid to go, wow, dad, that was fun. Can we do it again? Yeah. You win. I'm with you on that. And, you and, know, and then if they and if they want to do it again and again and again, then you get the opportunity to say, let's make it a little bit harder. I mean, you know, what about the kids who are starting to play basketball on an eight foot hoop? Right. What about playing, you know? ball you know softball or, or baseball with underhand pitch i mean there's so now i'm going to get to bifurcation what do you think of having two sets of rules for the tour and for everybody else um maybe and maybe it's maybe it's trifurcation i don't know if that's a word <laughs> it but, feels but like maybe, it. maybe it's the tour and then it's um you and i go out and play and and Maybe we're competing. Maybe we're just having fun. But we're going to post a score, and then and then the third category is family. So, right. family and kids. So at, at where I play, um, it's U of M's alumni course. Every Sunday, five o'clock is is family golf. So great. So and that's just moving the tees forward, even farther the forward. And yeah. and all the members know like it's going to be slow out there. They there might be some five sums. There's going to be some kids out there. Um, so I think more of those efforts are good. Um, and I think the tour, I mean, if I go back to Shackelford's book, the tour play with standard equipment, at least, at least a standard ball, right? Mm -hmm. I, if it, I go old school and say, you guys play with the same clubs, let, let's see who's, let's see who's the best player out here. And the same clubs as each other. I don't understand. At like the same, um, at least the same dimension of clubs and same clubs. Yeah. So, so in other words, if, you know, so Jason Day and Jordan Spieth are both playing with, I mean, this would never happen, but yeah, so, right. Where are you going? <laughs> they're both, they're both playing with, with, let's just start with the ball. So they all play with a, the old, uh, title. No, I, I'd, I'd make it a harder ball. Like maybe the DT. So you got to go out there. You got to make some shots. You're not just hit a, hit a rock. You're not putting a huge backspin on it. Yeah. You're not going to make it bite from 190 yards out of the rough. Like let, let's, let's use some, some artistry here. Clubs, maybe not. I mean, a perfect. Yeah, but, okay. So here I'll, I'll devil advocate on you on that one. Yeah. That's not going to be great TV. Well, I beg to differ and see, it would be for me. So maybe for one person. <laughs> I, that's I, as big as a podcast audience <laughs> but I, I would Brad here's the thing I would rather that than what the USGA tries to do which is have them play on freaking cement so have them play on a normal course but make the ball not as you know as velcro if you will 
right? Mm -hmm. So put them out on a normal course at a normal at a at a normal distance, and let's stop it with with these ridiculous the ridiculous rough or the you know the Shinnecock greens or whatever. I'd rather that. I mean, look, Jordan Spieth, you don't have to go shoot. What do you shoot? Twenty nine under. How about you play with a DT and you shoot? I don't know, sixteen under. <laughs> <laughs> Really? I mean, I like Well, so the, you must love the US Open cuz they that is, you know, it seems to be year after year the hardest round of golf that that the tour puts out there. Well, I mean, if you the, if you can walk away the US with minus Open. 1 and win it. Yeah, my love for the US Open dropped precipitously when Fox took over the coverage. As much mm -hmm. as I didn't love NBC, but um I do I do really like watching I mean, the Masters is my favorite by far. Sure. sure. But the U S open, I like it, but I don't like th this, this, um, obsession with protecting par. I don't like that. But the reason they have to do that is because of the equipment, right? Yeah. That's why they have to do it. So let's not mess with the course. Let's keep these courses. Um, you know, I, do they, do we need 260 yard par threes? Like that's ridiculous. Keep it at 215. Now I'm going to be hitting my, you know, I'll probably be hitting my hybrid. So Jason Day, okay, Jason, you're out, you're 215 out. You got a regular ball. And so maybe you got to, you're going to, you got to hit your five iron and you're going to have to hit a pretty damn good shot, right? As opposed to blasting uh, a seven iron that sticks five feet from the cup. That's, that's not fun for me to watch. Right. Right. I like to see people make shots, but uh, you like to see them struggle. Struggle, cool. struggle, yes. But but as the U.S. Open is now, it, it's it's beyond struggle. It's it's sadistic. <laughs> Chambers Bay last year. Yeah, you think? You yeah. think? Yeah. <laughs> he hit it right in the middle of the green, yeah. and it still rolled off the edge and went fifty yard. It you know, rolled really down awesome. and went away 30, 40 feet off the green. Even more sadistic when the when the Fox commentators are basically giving Dustin Johnson the, the, the trophy as they talk about Wayne Gretzky and then he three jacks from 12 feet. <laughs> All right. So number eight on this list is yeah. the golden age of broadcasters. It says, mm -hmm. you know, you got David Faraday, Johnny Miller, Brandon Chambly to name a few. And then it says, as for Joe Buck, yeah, we'll give him some time. <laughs> okay. Uh, <laughs> a lot of time. A lot, a of, lot time. of time. Um, so, you know, one of the things that the topics that's come up on the podcast talking to other people is because these these young guns are hitting the ball, like you said, 370, you know, averaging 330 a drive and, and we're struggling to hit it 230. Right. Um, by making courses longer and longer and longer, are we playing into their hands? Shouldn't we make the short game harder, harder, harder? You're, so that's that what golf is for the for the for the tour players. Yeah, because the the tour only goes to these courses once every five years, or you know, like in, not, let's not even talk about Augusta. But I mean, it, it it's so rare that they come. It's like building a football stadium, making the city pay for. Oh boy, I'm talking to someone in Detroit. Making the city pay for it, and then leaving. Yeah. Hello, Rams. You know, leaving leaving the town, leaving a hundred million dollars in debt on the stadium that the guy had the city build. Now he's going to go build one out of his own pocket in Los Angeles. Oh, we're really off topic here, but sure. yeah. you know, it's like where is sports going? Clearly, as you said early, it's all about generating revenue for everybody. Yeah, I I totally agree with you, Fred. I would love, and again, this kind of comes back to the equipment, but that's one of the beauties of of golf is you can go play a course and say, you know what? Tiger, like go play Beth page. Tiger played from here, played from, from this tee. Now that doesn't even exist. Like, no, I'm, I'm not going to hit, I'm not going to have a 270 carry, right? I just paid $200 to play out here. Um, and so, yeah, it'd be nice. Cause, cause now I, from what I understand, the, the choices, of courses that they can play at is shrinking because they just can't go any farther back. Right. It's like, well, no, there's a right. parking lot there or somebody's home is there. <laughs> uh, so yeah, let, let's, let's make the short game a premium. 
and again, and so let me ask you this, Fred, wouldn't the equipment help to solve that? Wouldn't limiting the, the, what they can do with their equipment solve that? Well, they do limit it. I mean, there are very strict rules on what they can do to equipment. You know, I mean, they keep moving. That's why it's so amazing. The rules haven't changed. And, you know, um, let's say on drivers and whatnot, the size, the head, the weight, you know, the, the center of gravity, all these things, they haven't changed in the last couple of years. And yet right. there are companies coming out with a new model every six months. Hey, if we paint the head white, right. you're going to hit the ball 10 yards farther. It's like, exactly. no, I don't think so. I don't think so. You think uh, what, one more of these stats here for you, right? The children shall lead, it says. The American Junior Golf Association, the country's preeminent junior tour, okay. has gone from 5,166 members and 71 tournaments in 2008 to 6,445 members and 117 tours in 2015. Mm -hmm. And so you know, there's a lot of young co folks come. And we got the Olympics this year with golf in it. So is it a great time for golf or is the internet killing us? I think it's a great time for golf for the wealthy as it always has been. So yep. These AJGA tournaments, I mean, you look at, look at, look at the cost to play in some of these tournaments. My kids can't play in them. They're two, 300 bucks to go, to go play in these tournaments. So then they don't have a chance really to compete mm -hmm. with these guys when the high school season comes around. So yes, for people with the money, absolutely, it's a great time to play golf because, ironically enough, part of it is the internet has allowed us to, you know, build more capacity, leisure time to build the capacity. Yeah, and, and to build the capacity to to organize these tournaments and connect people and put the kids' stats up. Johnny Smith is averaging a seventy three or whatever, um, but I still think it's not doing much for the have nots now. The research on that, no, I, I haven't done all the research on that. Part of that is just, like I said, my gut. Uh, my brother used to run the first tee in North Chicago, and he he has kind of the same refrain that that it's it's all optics, right? It's the TV, it's the TV ads, and the you know the core values, and the the kids in the inner city taking a swing. But is it sustaining? When I when I go to when I talk to the, the older African-American guys in Detroit that are playing at those courses, Donald Ross courses that have been around forever, they'll tell you there's no kids coming out here, man. They're not playing. Mm -hmm. And so I think when you look at the ground level, you see that. Um, and, you know, I'm, I'm not disputing any everything that Golf Magazine is, is saying, <laughs> but let's face it, they have an agenda, right? Sure, Obviously. sure. So. Is that okay? All right. You know, you talk about um, how things haven't changed. Mm -hmm. uh, remember the movie Hoop Dreams? Oh, phenomenal! I show that to my class uh, when I taught sophomores. I did unbelievable. I, so I just saw it again this weekend because we're going to have a group discussion about it, and someone said, "Yeah, let's watch that movie." Mm -hmm. It's amazing. It was at ninety four that movie was made. Yes, we even there's a lot of things that have not changed. Oh. It is. It is so relevant today. It's amazing how relevant that movie is today yeah. as it was when it was made in 94 Absolutely. after following these kids for five years. Absolutely. And when I show it to my kids, you know, my students who were born in, you know, 2000, roughly 2000, 2000, 2001. Yeah. And they watch that and they're just riveted. I mean, there they can pay attention for three and a half hours because they see that the I mean, it's just so complex, the, the, the gap between rich and poor, right? Yeah. And um, yeah. so, yeah, I mean, we can go into political discussion, but we'll let, we'll let Trump and uh, Bernie Sanders <laughs> pass that out. Okay. Well, hey, that was, this was fun. Thank you very much. Uh, congratulations on the piece getting such traction and, and drawing my attention. And thank you for uh, allowing me to invite you on to the show and have this heated conversation yeah thank you fred this was a blast really enjoyed it okay buddy no wait did we make sure that we said that you work for golf chicago magazine i think you said it in the beat. i think we i think we opened up with that well all right what before we go what's the what's the next piece you got going what what, what can we look forward to 
Here's what I'm, I've got a couple ideas, but I think it might start with the essential question. How do I get how and when do I get my son into the game of golf? So I, I don't want to push nope. it too hard. Right. Nope. Nope. But I also nope. don't want I don't want to be you know, I don't want to ignore it. So I, I'm excited about it, but I want to sure. I want to do it the right way. And so okay. I'm thinking about it. I actually have some answers for you. We've done shows on this. You have. I've okay. got a couple of heads. First of all, okay. wait till he starts walking. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. That's a start. Right. Okay. That's a Get start. But I think the best advice I ever received, because I had people say, hey, listen, my, my kid, you know, he's seven years old. I'd like to get him to start interested in golf. How do I do it? Mm -hmm. And the best suggestion I've ever heard was start them with putting. Mm -hmm. Put a ball outside of the hole, go to the practice putting green. It's free. Yep. Put the ball outside of the cup, put a ball outside the cup. And from three feet away, give them the putter, give them a ball and say, knock that ball into the hole. Because now we you know with the hole, it's kind of like a hard thing to figure out where am I looking? What's right. going on? But it, just give them a target and get them to knock the ball into the hole. Yeah. Okay. Makes and then try it from four feet, try it from five. Wait, if you can get a kid to fall in love with putting, uh -huh. golf will become very easy after that. And if they're good at putting, they'll be a really good golfer. Yeah, that's a good And golf. putting, like practice putting is, yeah. you know, is free. Yep. You don't have to worry about time. Mm -hmm. and, and the hardest thing in the world is hit a golf ball. Don't start them on a driving range. Mm -hmm. That is so difficult to do. It's so frustrating. Brutal. And you feel like there's people watching when you screw up or just roll six feet away. Yep. Start on the practice putting green. Get them to fall oh, in love there. I'm going to use that. Make that a game. Here, we're going to play six holes today. There's six holes on this thing. We're going to play each hole three times from a different place. We're going to play 18 holes. We'll be done in an hour. And let's face it. We can always work on our putting, too, if we want to score better. Always. Yeah. Always. I know. Maybe not you because you're a six. No, 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 no. <laughs> now, now, if I start doing yoga and get more flexible, now that six is going down. We'll get a couple there you more. go. And you and now you've built a relationship with your wife. Yeah. Your kids playing golf, and you're the happiest dad on town in town. Thanks, Fred. I, send me an invoice for that um, counseling you just gave. <laughs> All right, Rory, <laughs> Rory Hughes, writer for Golf Chicago Magazine and the Internet, and Thanks, a teacher. Fred. And and thank you so much for being a teacher. We don't thank you enough. We appreciate what you do. Thank you. And and know that we would never do it. Appreciate. It. Yeah, don't. <laughs> See you, Fred. Bye-bye. That noise.